On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the early 1970s. We're going to be taking a look at Roberta Flack, and she's going to be performing the first time ever I saw your face. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we're going to watch this one the whole way through without the pitch monitoring software or the vocal wave on screen and then we'll jump into the analysis after. So let's get into it. The first time ever have it what a vocal performance but let me draw your attention to the piano playing as well because some of the stuff that Roberta does on the piano is so tasteful she does a little run up the keys kind of halfway through things that you might not necessarily notice because you're listening to that vocal but what a vocal <laughs> It is just so full of emotion and she is one of those singers that has that ability to take somebody else's song 
and put her own emotion into it but make it sound like it's her song. But I've also mentioned Roberta recently when we were looking at Laurie Lieberman and I'll put a link to the video that I did on Laurie in this video somewhere probably at the top of the screen now so you guys can check that out if you want to. Laurie wrote a song called Killing Me Softly with his song and Roberta had a huge hit with that as well and it was I think just the next year after Laurie released that and I have spoken to Laurie on Instagram and she will be on the channel soon so stay tuned for a chat with Laurie getting the background behind that song but it really does prove the point that Roberta just put her own spin on these compositions that were written by other people. The first thing that I want to point out is right at the beginning of the performance I think this might be Roberta playing the piano live but there being a backing track going on because somebody is in charge of starting this backing track because when Roberta starts on the piano there's a definite timing to it that she leads in and then it comes in I think a little bit out of time let's have a listen again the first time you can just see how it doesn't really flow at the beginning and I don't know what this performance is from but we can't see any other instruments anywhere and it's quite a full-on production here if there is a band because we've got strings in there and everything so I think it's most likely that backing track and it just started a little bit off but the good thing is Roberta can obviously hear the backing track and just adjusts her own playing to then get in sync with it. Another huge advantage of being a talented pianist is being able to just go with wherever that backing track is going. So now we'll jump into the vocal pitch monitoring software and have a look at Roberta's voice on screen represented by the yellow line. Ever I saw your So straight away, we've got just supreme pitch accuracy going on here with the G4. But the interesting thing is that when we have a little look back, I mean, this vibrato again is so consistent with the frequency of it, but it's quite tight. We are directly over the F4, so just pitch perfect. But we're not even at two semitones here. As we go back, I think we were a little bit sharp. And interestingly, we do have, it's quite subtle in this first G3. But as we go forward, we have this increase in pitch. We ascend with the vibrato. So that's something to look out for. When you're talking about great vocalists like Roberta, she's just hitting the best notes that there are and the notes that she feels should be the most accurate or have the right emotion attributed to them. So when we're talking about this ascension with vibrato, it's just a subconscious trait of her voice. And we'll probably see this with the pitch monitoring software. If it picks it up, we'll see it ascend now and again, because it's just something that happened naturally with her voice. I'll let it play on a little bit more. And the moon and the stars. Again, look at the way that we start with that vibrato on the E4. The stars. And it goes up a little bit at the end. Again, listening to this, it's great to see it in this kind of detail, but it's great to be able to listen to it while looking at Roberta's voice represented on screen because then you can think back to the performance that we watched in the beginning without the software on screen and we can think, did we notice that? That she's ascending with vibrato. You don't because we just take in this art that's being produced and we just react to it emotionally. You don't really 
get to appreciate the detail of the voice until we analyze it but that's exactly the point to see how these great singers all had tiny things in her in their voices and in her voice roberta's voice that would differ to other great vocalists but they then had other things in common which we can talk about the consistent vibrato the frequency of it the accuracy here just slightly sharper the g4 but the way that that is probably the most accurate note for when we're talking about equal temperament, 440 hertz tuning. That's what this graph is representing. But the note isn't always on the line because music doesn't work like that. You can't just pigeonhole how notes should sound and how frequencies should sit, especially when you're playing with a piano and you're playing or singing to a backing track that might have some instruments in there that are slightly out of tune, slightly sharp, slightly flat. So a vocalist, I mean, it's amazing when you think about it, a vocalist will always hit the mean average pitch of all of the instruments that might be slightly out of tune. There might be, you know, <laughs> three violins that one of them is slightly sharp, another one's slightly flat, and another one might be even more flat, but the vocalist will find the mean pitch of all of these instruments going on and hit that note. So this is why the G4, that, I mean, we know it sounded great. So it's just the most accurate note, even though it's not over the line. When you start hearing notes that are directly on the lines all the time, then it's sounding like auto-tune because it will be, because great vocalists never sing straight on lines all the time. We'll have another listen to that because I want to hear the isolated vocal rather than getting everything involved, just so we can get an appreciation of the dynamics that are being used here, the way that Roberta just leans into her voice a little bit more. Interestingly, when she connects her vocal cords a little bit more at the end of this vocal phrase, she's going a little bit sharp with that vibrato. So it's almost like leaning into it, putting a little bit more expression into it is causing that note to go a little bit sharp. And when you start hitting the note sharp, it has a more dramatic effect. And you'll hear this all the time in uh, opera, in, in classical singing. I mean, she was just amazing at piano. She still is amazing, of course. But when I'm talking about in her younger years, at the age of 11, 12, 13, I think at the age of 15, she was offered a place at university because of her ability on the piano. So it gives you an idea. But anyway, let's have a listen to just her voice. I felt the earth move in my hand Like the trembling heart of a captive bird And listen to that change going back down and having that air in the sound like a captive bird and allowing a little bit of that air to go through just body language wise have a look at the way that when we ascend with that vibrato roberta actually sits up in her seat just giving whatever emotion that she's trying to portray is coming across through her voice and everything is indicating and it's expressing what she wants to get across through her body through her voice is just one the message of the song and the performance just rolls into one and that's what you get with great performance let's just have a look again you can see the way that she actually rises up and we get the rising literally the pitch rising with that vibrato the other thing that we've got is the drama in the delivery by not keeping the phrasing predictable so in this line that we're about to hear Move in my head. that little delay on Move in my head. and there's that so she's allowing that H to happen, but just delaying the onset of her vocal cords coming together. Listen again. Move in my head. It's so cool that But having that control just to bring them together and get this super clean connection and then going into this run. 
all in one breath, ending with that really consistent vibrato. Just to highlight the point about the speed of the journey that we're going on here with Roberta and her delivery, listen to the way that she changes the timing of this line. So close to my That, so close to my... And she doesn't change with the chord. The chord has already changed and she's staying on that original note. And we all know where the next note is. But this is the point that throughout the performance so far, we are great at remembering melodies. And even if this is the first time that you've heard this song, no pun intended, your brain has already stored this melody from the first time we heard it. So by changing it the second time, it's just adding more drama. It's leaving you in suspense because you know where the note is going and you know that the chord has changed because we've all heard it, but she's staying on that original note. So then when she does go up, it's just gonna have double the impact just because of that delay really subtle details but you always get this with great vocalists when you look at it in this kind of detail you get such a deeper appreciation of what they do and why they are so engaging to listen to let's just listen to it again so close to my and by applying vibrato to that so close to my the vibrato you usually have at the end of your phrase where you're not going to ascend. That's na, and then you'll go down. So by adding in that vibrato again, she's throwing you off the scent that we're going ha, and we're actually going up after that. It's rare as well to have a vocalist of this quality with the instrumental ability <laughs> at the level that it is as well, because I said about her being so proficient at age 11, she started playing age nine. You could argue that that's quite a late starter because you get these child prodigies that start playing at age five, six, seven, but Roberta just took to it and she was offered that place at Howard University, it was at age 15, and she started studying at that age. She enrolled age 15 and then she changed her major from piano to the voice. Just while I'm talking about Roberta's background and her career, you could be forgiven for thinking that because she's so advanced at the age of 15 that she got signed up and had a really successful music career from a young age, but that's far from the case. Once she had finished at university, she got into teaching and I'm sure she would have taught vocals as well as piano. And it wasn't until she was 30, 31 years of age that Les McCann spotted her performing in a nightclub and he got her an audition with Atlantic Records and she signed a record deal with Atlantic Records, recorded her first album, which is called First Take. But unfortunately, that didn't really take off. They didn't get a lot of sales from that album until one of her songs, this song, got featured on a movie. And that was Clint Eastwood's movie called Play Misty For Me. So it then turned into the biggest selling song of that year, 1972. The album, First Take, then went to number one in the charts. And the following year, 1973, she uh, did her cover of Laurie's song, Killing Me Softly, with his song. And that turned into a monster hit for Roberta going to number one. But it just goes to show how many artists and how many analysis videos we've done where the artist we're featuring is a household name, but they might have spent 10 plus years trying to get somewhere and having a normal job, just teaching until they do get their break. And Roberta is very much one of those that just kept on plugging away, playing live and doing what she had to do until she got that break and Les heard her and then the rest is history. But thank you guys so much for requesting this video for me to take a look at. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, keep those suggestions, requests coming in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!